Barbadians at home and overseas. It is a signal honor and pleasure for me to address you as we once again celebrate Christmas with fellow believers around the world and express goodwill and peace towards all men and women, believers and non-believers, at this most special time of the Christian calendar. During the past 12 months, my wife and I have been blessed with the opportunity to visit many groups working in the community to improve life for young and old alike. We have met people from all walks of life, from centenarians who have had the good fortune to live through some of the most momentous times of our history, to new citizens who have come from other parts of the Caribbean and further afield, but who regard this island as their home. They bring their special skills and experience to enrich the fabric of our society. We have met school children, singing in choirs, students and lecturers from the University of the West Indies, church leaders and congregations from all denominations and faiths, the elderly and the infirm. We have met many from the private and public sectors, public servants, be they administrators, members of the uniformed or armed services, members of caring professions, local artists and performers. We have met members of the voluntary sector, whether it be the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, the Guide, the Scouts, the Rotary, or the Seroptimists, to name but a few. Everyone plays their part in our community. We help each other to develop our island home through the many challenges which we face. As 2012 draws to a close, you recall that this is the year in which Her Majesty the Queen celebrated her Diamond Jubilee. The Diamond Jubilee was an important milestone in the life of Her Majesty. It was celebrated in the United Kingdom and in the other Commonwealth countries in different ways. Barbados and visitors were afforded the opportunity in February to celebrate as well on the occasion of the visit of their Royal Highnesses, the Earl and Countess of Essex. There was a joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament, as well as a series of events to commemorate the occasion. It was a most splendid affair. This was also the year when London successfully hosted the Olympics and the Paralympic Games, where many Caribbean athletes made us truly proud. We had the pleasure of sharing in the joy of Jamaica, the Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, and Grenada, who won a gold medal for the first time. We salute the dedication and hard work of our athletes and their coaches, including those who did not win medals on this occasion, but who also brought credit to us through their dignity and sportsmanlike behavior on the international stage. This year has also had a share of misfortune and tragedy. Some disasters have been natural and some have been man-made, where we have conflict and civil war leading to the breakdown of societies. We in Barbados have been spared the worst ravages of both types of disaster and must be thankful for that. Neighboring islands, particularly Haiti and Jamaica, have been devastated by Hurricane Sandy. Many of us also have friends and relatives on the east coast of the United States, which was also badly affected by the superstorm. Some would have lost loved ones, family and friends. Some would have lost jobs, homes and possessions. Further afield, we have also heard of bloody conflict in the Middle East, Syria and parts of Africa. For many here and abroad, Christmas will be a subdued and a solemn affair. How bleak it must have been too on that first Christmas for Mary and Joseph when they traveled from Galilee in Nazareth to Judea and Bethlehem, the city of David, where they went to be registered for the census, which had been ordered by the emperor Caesar Augustus, who was evoked to levy higher taxes on his people. Mary was heavily pregnant, and Joseph was unable to find anywhere for his wife to give birth but in a manger. 
One cannot think of a less auspicious place to bring you life out of the world but in a barn surrounded by farm animals. Yet from such humble beginnings came a man who would bring light to the world and be a savior to mankind. The story of Jesus' birth teaches us many things. Humility, devotion to family, faith, and love. Mary and Joseph had one of the most important tasks to raise the baby Jesus to become a man. It must not have been an easy task as they were not a wealthy family able to give their son the most expensive clothing or material goods. Apart from the theological significance of this child and his birth, we can learn a great deal about the family from their trials. The need for parents to care and protect their children. The need for a family to stay together even in times of adversity and to struggle on, even when fate seems to deal you unkind blows. It's at times like these that we pull together as a family, as a community, we will not face such extreme hardships as others affected by natural and man-made disasters, but we should nurture our institutions and community organizations to assist those less fortunate, whether at home or overseas, in our small way. The solidarity we show at times of despair should be evident throughout the year and equally at Christmas, when many are blessed with good health and largesse but others are alone, sick, or unable to enjoy the festivities as they would wish. We pray for all those in need of comfort and those who minister to them. We should strengthen the bonds of our community, appreciate and continue to nurture the positive aspects of national life and culture, which make us a beacon for pluralism and democracy in the region. The ability to listen to each other respectfully, even when we disagree, to organize and hold fair and free elections without violence, and the knowledge that no right thinking person would wish to see this beautiful country destroyed by such senseless acts. These are vitally important matters. We should be kept constantly in view during the coming months as we prepare for the general elections. The generosity of spirit and wisdom to appreciate our differences, as well as our shared humanity, are features of Barbados that my wife and I have experienced and treasured as we have undertaken our new duties. Our beloved country, Barbados, has just celebrated its 46 year of independence. A stable government is one of the principal characteristics of our country, from which all other aspects of our community flow. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, let us rededicate ourselves to the virtues of family, life, humility, faith, and love. The message of peace and goodwill towards all men is a universal one which is shared by all peoples wherever they live and whatever their circumstances. Fellow Barbados at home and abroad, and visitors to our shores, on behalf of my wife and family, on my own behalf, I extend to you very best wishes for Christmas. It is my earnest hope that you find good health, success, and prosperity in the new year and beyond. May God bless you all and cause the light of his confidence to shine upon you.